how you know you are looking unto Jesus is that you will see sight here is very powerful because that was the desire of blind Bartimaeus blind Bartimaeus never said that my eyes should open he said that I may receive your eyes can be open and yet you are not seeing his request was not to he said that I may receive my sight there are people here tonight you need to receive your sight because you have lost touch you are looking but you are not seeing how do I know you are not seeing based on the interpretation of your situation it shows you are not seeing you have called process shame you have called preservation delay the names that you give your situation tells me you are not seeing who is learning the way of a spiritual man is a very strange path that for a long time it's only you and God that will know the name of what you are doing it does not make sense to men is someone learning now we do not yet see all things under his feet but we see Jesus so back to my story at age 30 ladies and gentlemen Jesus is still roaming around somewhere wherever then when he clocks 30 do you know that John the Baptist was frustrated baptizing because the baptism was a formula to identify Jesus and ordain him to ministry that guy had been baffing everybody and could not find he would watch, bring them out no heavens open go away no heavens open and then the Bible says watch this now one day while John is baptizing he looks because he was following a pattern the first thing was that he saw he saw he saw he saw he saw what others could not see John saw and when he looked they were looking at a man and he said behold I have seen behold the lamb we are coming there I'm not I, I will not I, we, we have we have a don't worry tonight we're introducing and then we'll pray because I'll be teaching you that there are seven dimensions of Jesus you must see if not you will fail seven one of it is a clue that I give you now you must behold the lamb that is the first dimension of him that you see if you cannot see Jesus as the lamb of God you've not even started your race that in the economy of heaven your race does not start when you are born your race starts the day you behold the lamb <laughs> so there are people in the spirit now physically they are 40 years but in the spirit they are one years old the reason is because they got born again last year so as far as heaven is concerned you are only one year into your race based on God's pattern anyway sit down John says when we get over when we pray in tongues for one minute and then we'll continue are we together so John says behold the lamb watch this that takes away the sins of the world and then Jesus comes to John and John says based on what I have seen I'm not even qualified to untie the latchet of your shoe and he says suffer it to be so that scripture may be fulfilled the Bible says that when he dipped Jesus and brought him out the Bible says the heavens were open the Holy Ghost hmm. that means the formula for victory is you never start till the Holy Ghost comes you see the same pattern with the Apostles Jesus warned them follow my pattern tarry you have enough information but don't go it doesn't work that way if you carry brain work and go you will fail 
the Holy Ghost needs to come there is something he comes with when he comes he becomes a trigger now you can go how does Jesus lecture a people for three and a half years non-stop and he tells them you are still not qualified to go stay looking unto Jesus not even Jesus himself started ministry without the Holy Ghost not even Jesus himself are we together now remember that he came as the word incarnate what else was he waiting for John chapter 1 and verse 3 the Bible says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made so what was the word waiting for again looking on to Jesus there are many times you feel ready there are many times you believe you are ready but the Spirit of God constrains you he says if you move now the trigger in the spirit that should announce you is not there and sometimes you can announce yourself and struggle for a long time you see and because your struggle is not demonic it's a problem of deviation from patterns even if you bind and cast that struggle it will not go because the anointing does not fight God are we together let me give you a counsel by the word the privilege of mentorship and experience every time you pray over a matter and bind and cast and it does not change take your eyes away from the devil and find out what pattern you are violating did you hear what i said yes, sir. the devil is not that powerful having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and when your own obedience is complete so the pattern for jesus was to tarry as an adult still tarry you learned in the temple still tarry are we together now yes still tarry 30 years old i have three more years but if the holy ghost has not come tarry don't waste what is left it's his presence that brings value to the time you have but as soon as the holy ghost came the bible says the spirit drove him to the wilderness he went there he prayed 40 days he prayed 40 nights he fasted was tempted of the devil then the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit and in a moment he says his fame his fame what manner of man is this what breed of a man is this he was invincible he manifested dominion with power there was a pattern he followed are we together and then he gets to a point where overnight the one strong and great mighty invisible jesus invincible in power suddenly becomes weak and helpless that when men came to capture him he gave himself so freely he was running this was the hidden wisdom that Paul said if the princes of this world knew the disciples were shocked how does Jesus become so weak they thought he was going to just speak a word and defeat all those people he gave himself and like a sheep to the slaughter the disciples ran away because they concluded that this man was a failure his agenda of a savior was a scam and they needed to run for their lives and he hung upon the tree ladies and gentlemen he made a strange statement it is it is not the statement is where he said it how do you say it is finished on a tree I understand it is finished when you are seated at the right hand in a place of honor and yet on a tree the epitome of failure yet he still said it is in other words I have run correctly according to script the beating according to script the seeming weakness according to script giving myself like a sheep to the slaughter according to script being quiet when I had what to say according to script 
Paul says, you want to win? Look unto Jesus. There is, you have to model your spiritual life after this pattern. Are we together now? If you do not model your spiritual life after the pattern Jesus, Paul says you are already doomed for failure. In other words, even Jesus, the son of the living God, he made an honest admission that I can of myself do nothing. Jesus, do Jesus. How could he declare such insufficiency as the word? that I can of myself do nothing as I see. My, my daily work depends on that which I see. I'm in the business of replicating the heart of the Father. And even though I will not want to go to the cross my way, but nevertheless, since that is what is in the Father's heart, not my will, but yours be done. Are we together now? And he died and when he resurrected the bible says wherefore on account of compliance with that pattern god gave him a name and that he gave him that name to be above every other name and that at the name of jesus every knee must bow of things in heaven are we together the earth and under the earth and every tongue must confess that that jesus who walked in keeping with divine pattern is now lord to the glory of the father now listen to me i will tell you the difference between enviable prophetic destinies and destinies that are void of color dominion and exploits is not necessarily being born again you can have two believers who are saved but one has decided to look on to jesus whereas another person decided to invent a formula to run his life with and the thing about God is that when you choose to reject his formula he will respect whatever you bring but you must be ready to face the consequence of using another formula Paul is saying many run how many of you know that all the people in the field are usually trained by someone including the person who takes the last position he was trained by someone only that his formula was weak and inferior and the only way it is tested is when the gun is shot and everybody begins to run. Are we together now? We play football and there are nations that from their first match they return home. Now I don't mean to be, are we together? They all came in the field, they were dressed, they jogged, they were happy and yet, and the ones who won them most times were confident. They knew they were sending them home. How do you pay for people's flight tickets they get i'm not being sarcastic and from the first match they lose all the matches and return home it's not the players the problem is the formula look at me when you mention prestigious universities today like harvard yale stanford MIT and all these great global do you know why they excel it is not necessarily the students it is that they have designed they found a winning formula are we together and that any student that diligently passes through that formula will emerge a certain kind of student organizations began to identify students who pass through those institutions because of this formula when you eat McDonald's or KFC, the reason why there is consistency, regardless who prepares it, is because they submit to the same formula. Are we together now? Isn't it amazing that they fire and employ people and you do not know based on the taste of what you are eating. You are not even aware that the person who made the chicken, it was his first time. The power of that formula. So. Paul is saying, if you lose in the race of life, it is because you did not respect this formula. Please, I want you to understand what I'm teaching you tonight. There is a formula. Something plus something in the spirit equals an apostle. 
something plus something in the spirit equals a prophet something plus something in the spirit equals kingdom wealth something plus something in the spirit equals a healing ministry something plus something in the spirit you don't just carry mantles you don't just carry the anointing you don't just carry grace there is a formula that produces an intercessor there is a formula that produces a prayer warrior there is a formula that produces a, a healing evangelist there is a formula that produces a man of influence there is a formula that produces a man of power listen please listen to me I don't mean to insult your understanding but please listen to me how many of you know that a professor of medicine and surgery from here in South Africa can meet for the first time with a professor of medicine and surgery in America and meet with a professor of medicine and surgery from India their first time of meeting can be the surgical room for the first time and none of them would doubt themselves because there was an institution that accredited them so if why do i see a believer in south africa and a believer in kenya and a believer in nigeria and a believer somewhere else and they are different variety of people i'm telling you that those variety are a reflection of the deviation or compliance to this pattern this is the reason for failure now you may blame the landlord you may blame your wife you may blame your husbands they are the obvious answers not the right ones that there are consequences please listen God himself designed I hope you know sit down sit down please sit down I hope you know that Apostle Paul before he began his exegesis of the Pauline epistles Paul humbly gave us his credentials to know the basis of his apostolic authority Ephesians 3 and verse 3 so that you did not doubt when you heard him speak things that were very deep he says how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote a four in few words verse four it says whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ which before time verse five was hidden it was not made known to the sons of men but now it is being revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit what is the mystery verse 9 that this mystery makes all men see verse 9 all men all men to make all men regardless your background it can open your eyes to see what makes for victory let me tell you this ladies and gentlemen I have read my Bible everyone the Bible calls a cloud of witness in their generation there was a pattern for victory and glory that was revealed whoever became great was not necessarily the one prophesied but the one who walked in keeping with that pattern please listen let me digress for a moment and teach you something the Holy Spirit taught me a few years ago the Holy Spirit taught me that every name, Apostle Felix, that you find in the Bible, patriarchs, men and women who did exploits in the spirit, that when you find those names, they are not just the names of men. They also represent spiritual pathways that produces a certain kind of believer. Listen, so when you say Abraham, Abraham is beyond a man. Abraham is the name given to a kind of spiritual path that when you follow you will become a portrait of a blessed man that Jacob is not just the name of a man Jacob is the name of a certain kind of spiritual pathway that leads to encounters so if you want to encounter God the individual that personifies that dimension is the man Jacob are we together now 
that when when you look at the woman called Mary she's beyond the mother of Jesus she's a description of a kind of way the Holy Spirit leads men Mary is not about a woman Mary is about a pathway there is a pathway when you are holding something precious God begins to train you in a way that parallels what he did for Mary that what others can go free with he keeps you when you begin to see unusual consecration then you see the pattern of Mary it means something that is about to be born in you is a holy thing are we together now one of the ways you test spirits is to check the character of the dealings of God as consistent with those he built in the Bible if your training cannot parallel a name in the Bible is a familiar spirit leading you are we together that means somewhere in your journey you should be able to see that you are imagined parallel to someone if God is going to call you to be an apostle you no matter how unique your ministry is you will find the parallel of your dealing and your training it is one of the ways we judge spirits hmm. hallelujah let's get back to our discussion so three things happen when we look unto Jesus number one is that when we look unto Jesus we see what do we see a pathway a pathway through Jesus the Bible calls it an ancient path Jeremiah 6 16 that when you set your gaze on Jesus your focus your dependence and your willingness to part to pattern your life after him as a reward for looking the spirit of grace will draw forth the things that have been revealed by the spirit ordained for our glory he will start showing you a certain pathway that when you walk the end of it must be glory it doesn't matter how your life starts I reckon that the sufferings of this present time Romans 8 18 are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us bring to me any believer regardless what level of failure let me just verify that that person is malleable enough to look to Jesus I will show you a wonder that will eventually manifest do you know why all I need to do is to bring the person to alignment with this formula called looking on to Jesus and I'll explain to you in detail what it means to look on to Jesus so number one when we look to Jesus we see everybody say we see the only way to find the pathway how do I say this now there is a pathway you can find from scripture that guides believers to victory are we together but there is a pathway unique to you based on what God has called you to do. Are we, are we understanding now? You start with the Bible, but eventually the Holy Spirit will come and navigate you through a path that does not make sense to any other person who is not you. It is the path branded for your own results. Are we together now? When you look unto Jesus, you will see. If you have not seen the path that leads to your victory, it is you don't look for it, you look for Jesus. When you look for Jesus, among the many rewards is that you will see. Lord, what should I do with my life? Uh -uh. You don't find purpose by searching for purpose. You find purpose by looking unto Jesus. Number two, when you look unto Jesus, the second thing that happens to you is that you are changed. You are changed. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. You are changed. Please give it to us. The Bible says, but we all with open face beholding. Now you understand what he's saying, right? Beholding through your focus, through your dependence. Your willingness to pattern your life after the glory you are seeing. It says we are changed. 
into the same image from glory to glory and that by the spirit of god we are changed transformation that when you look onto jesus the implication is that every dimension of god you catch in your vision you will begin to become it you will begin to become it i'll teach you tomorrow i hope i let's see how many of them we are going to capture there are seven dimensions of jesus you must capture in your looking onto jesus you want wholesome dominion and victory. Hallelujah. Because there were things that other disciples saw, but there were things only three of the disciples saw. And those three, as they saw it, they became the pillars of the apostolic ministry. And when Satan started killing the people, you will see that he looked for those three. He looked for James, killed him. Went to Peter, killed him. Was searching for John till John landed in the Isle of Patmos. He wanted to kill everybody, but they were certain three because of something they saw. They beheld a dimension of God's glory the other apostles did not see. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is something a man can see and then you begin to be changed. Weak you. Prayerless you carnal you fleshly you as you are looking on to jesus something is happening within your spirit man that people can look at you and know that this man is changing this man is changing the way you are speaking you did not intend for it to change it is the implication of looking at jesus are we together now every believer who remains the same version for a long time has stopped looking at jesus it is impossible to look on to Jesus and remain the same version. No. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, chapter 3, they looked at those people, chapter 2 and 3. And the Bible says that they knew they were unlearned men, but they reckoned that they had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. Now, let me tell you something in honest submission. Many today in the body of Christ have stopped looking on to Jesus and they are looking on to things that only his presence can bring like anointing like money like fame and because the devil knows that this th I hope you know that the devil has an advantage of age he's been in this system for a very long time he's any other thing but a fool are we together Satan is defeated you are correct Satan is a loser, you are correct. Satan is under my feet, you are correct. But Satan is a fool, you are wrong. You are wrong. You are wrong. Are we together now? I'm saying this because most believers, I am burdened. Most believers have not been able to become that portrait of glory and dominion and power. We have lost a formula. That must be restored to the body of Christ. We have lost a formula. It's the reason why we lack power. A lot of talking. But there is no power. A lot of propositions on what God can do. God can change my family. Yes, you are right. God can, the cattle on a thousand hill belongs to him. But we are still poor. We are still broke. Honestly speaking. This is a, a, a let's be honest with ourselves. How many things can we do without crying? Are we together? Our not looking onto Jesus, our deviating from the formula He gave has made us to misrepresent Him. So, if men are to learn the power of God through our lives, the glory of God through our lives, we will become a bad representation of the Christ the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in our current state now even though God is helping us but our current state has turned God to look like a liar it is the reason why the nations are consciously rejecting him there is no proof to our speakings there are many believers today who have to pray in tongues before you know they are saved it means they have not become the character of the Christ. 
something about the nature of Christ has not been fully formed in them. He says, my little children of whom I travail in birth until Christ. That they can look at a man and without, the Bible says they will call you ministers of our God. Because when they look at you, your disposition, as you exude the nature of Christ, the only name they can give you is pastor. Not because you are a pastor. That's the closest thing to the transformation they are seeing. I'm not talking of praying in tongues or just dressing like a pastor. That something about a rich display of the fruit of the spirit in your life. Are we together now? Yes. Many believers, it is clear that we have deviated from the formula that produces power. The formula that produces grace. With all due respect, servants of the living God, I tell you this with every sense of humility. By the mercies of God, I know what it means to have results. There are many people who will not have results for a long time and sadly forever. It is not a problem of energy or zeal. It is a problem of patterns. If you run fast on the wrong direction, you are still wrong. You are just hurrying to pain faster. Are we together? Today, you see, we do a lot. We do the things that the Bible says we should do, but not in keeping with the patterns that should produce them. For instance, in the name of Jesus, everybody who is sick, you are going to be healed now. And we are not lying, except that it becomes a lie later on. <laughs> we don't intend to lie, but the result does not show. Are we together? Now, I'm speaking apostolically, not just to House of Treasures. You understand now? Oh, in the name of Jesus, be blessed. And the truth is the person returns. He's not blessed. It's just that they respect us as men of God and nobody wants to embarrass us. But the truth is that they are not blessed. Are we together? Now, now let me make a statement. And when you come into a conference like this and see what God has done and see what God is doing, let me tell you the truth. It is good to glorify God in the man, but it is wise for you to know that results are controlled by patterns. God is a God of patterns. Listen, his creation of patterns is part of his system of justice so that it shows that he does not show favoritism. Righteousness and justice is the foundation of his throne. He told Cain, he said, if you have done it well, will your sacrifice not be accepted? In other words, God did not choose to bless another person at the expense of another. No, he made the patterns available and planted teaching priests to help you. And their assignment is to open your eyes that you will see. There is a pattern that if you follow as looking unto Jesus, because like you will be learning, Jesus has many dimensions. He says, come and learn of me. There are things you will learn. Are we together? There is a way you look to Jesus as the lamb, you will be saved. There is a way you look to Jesus. There are many dimensions to him. And I'm going to be showing you. And you will be using these visions to cross-check the result in your life. If you lack power, there is a dimension of Jesus you have not looked at. There is a dimension of Jesus that controls power. Are we together now? Yes. The resurrected king is a dimension that controls power. Acts 4.33 And with great power gave the apostles witness, not of the crucified, of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. There is something you must know and see to access the resurrection power that defends that vision. My cry for the body of Christ, not just in South Africa, but all, of, all, all over Africa, is that the deficiencies in our spiritual life, Apostle Felix, the, the kinds of weak believers, with all due respect, that are being raised, it is not necessarily about a man of God being good or bad. It is that we've not even understood the pattern to be used. 
There are students today who do bad in school, not because they are bad. They were not privileged, like we say, to go to a good school. Am I right on that? You look at the students and you see zeal. But unfortunately, they went to a school where they couldn't help it. And there are others who may be average students, but because they went to an exceptional school, you get to a school where the person who scores 20th position has 84%. 84%. And it's called position 20. What a good school. And yet you go to another school, the person who took first position has 56%. <laughs> the problem is standard. The standard. So this conference is to lift a bar. To raise a standard. That when you say, I am a Christian, there is an expectation. There is a level of power. There is a level of wisdom. There is a level of character. There is a level of grace that must emanate from your life. Are we together? You can start in a manger, but if you remain there, you are not looking on to Jesus. Jesus started in a manger, but he did not end there. He ended on the throne. And Paul says, to run this race, don't be in a hurry to start moving. Let me teach you. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. All of them ran. And they ran in such a way that at the end of it, they end that status that he calls in Hebrews 11 as elders. It was not age that gave them the status. It was the degree of their compliance to patterns. There is a dimension of Jesus that when you see in one year your ministry can quantum leap 10 years worth of results it is true it is true it is true there is a dimension of Jesus that when you see you will never lack help us again for the rest of your life you see let me tell you this there are graces that defend revelations the proof that light has entered you is the grace to demonstrate it also comes with it anything you claim to know without the grace component to leave it out here and now has not yet entered your spirit when you say i carry favor there is a grace if it that is the grace that will compel men and systems to treat you in a certain way and if that is not happening then you don't have it it's as simple as that hallelujah I came to challenge you tonight that looking on to Jesus is beyond just reading your Bible please sit down you will read what I'm explaining to you so number one when we look at Jesus we see number two when we look at Jesus we are transformed number three when we look at Jesus we are empowered to manifest the glory of God I'll find somewhere and pray for tonight let me just take one dimension of Jesus the Bible says we can behold Jesus as the lamb that was saying it says worthy is the lamb not worthy is the king worthy is the lamb that was slain he did not receive what he received because he was a king he received what he received as a lamb that means when you want to receive you will not receive as a king there are things you need to become that portrait of a lamb it is true that we are kings and priests but you need to find out at what point you receive what a lamb Worthy is the lamb that was slain. <laughs> Do I teach this now? Our time is gone. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very fearful statement. I'm not just talking about born again. There is a principle there. We are looking on to Jesus now. Worthy is Jesus the lamb. Worthy is Jesus the slain it was by his being a lamb and by his being slain that he received 
there are certain levels of spiritual inheritance before you enter those dimensions you will have to strip yourself of being a king even though you are a king are we together jesus the lamb is the secret of meekness and humility and that is the secret of exaltation if you have not met jesus the lamb you can be an anointed man but you will see pride all over your life you have met several dimensions of jesus but not the lamb unfortunately the one who receives wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings is a lamb that had been slain let me interpret this to you it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus he's showing you the secret to his being exalted and he says that even though he was god he stripped himself that means when you are on the journey to empowerment be ready to become a lamb and be ready even to be slain do you understand this i reckon that the sufferings of our present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us you will see a believer who loves god with all his heart but he gets to a season in his life where almost everything that looks like honor and dignity is stripped away from him it is not carelessness he himself does not understand it was as he began to press into god friends disappointed him and left him he's becoming a lamb something is happening he's about to encounter power he's beholding something about jesus i don't know anybody who is a real carrier of genuine power who does not have scars you must be slain to receive it is receiving spiritual virtues and becoming a person of stature in the spirit no it's not a king you must become a lamb i hope someone is learning so you get to a point in your life where you are a great ceo somewhere and god will instruct you go and join the ushering team then they will send you to the toilet and whilst you are there your ego being stung you don't know that it is a programming in the spirit while you feel insulted you are becoming a lamb many times you will have the ability to say certain things and god says keep quiet for a long time you become like a fool there is a dimension of jesus that is being birthed in you he says behold the lamb i know you use it just for born again i'm showing you a dimension you want power genuine power that lasts you want exaltation next time you pray and say lord lift me make sure you understand what you are saying lord lift me means i want to see the dimension of jesus that made for his exaltation and that dimension is not the king on a throne ladies and gentlemen that dimension is that you must become a lamb and many times that lamb will bleed as though it had been slain except that it will not die job said though he slay me you don't like what i'm teaching oh dear unfortunately i am showing you the way of authentic apostolic power i can tell you stories in my own life ladies and gentlemen if it is the god of the bible you are working with you get to a point in your life there is nobody that has exactly the same thing he start he had in his hand when he started working with god and god power your hands must be empty in the journey for power to rest god will strip you of everything everything you don't hear these messages again unfortunately is the reason why we jump and claim and i'm not being sarcastic and we find nothing we shout in the realm of the spirit and the demons just look and say what a generation You want to speak and that your words carry power you want god to trust you with the destiny of territories ladies and gentlemen i can tell you this before prayer and fasting 
before a lot of spiritual activities come the first thing that happens is that you must behold the lamb that means you must die death is the secret of life death is the secret of glory when the bible says so run in a way that you win there were people who got to a point where they were stripped of everything glory they got to a point where their sufficiency became of God so when God calls you you come as you are but he looks at everything that is taking his place in your life and one by one I assure you if it is the God of the Bible he doesn't do that to hurt you he does that to exalt you if it is Isaac be ready Isaac is going if it is your intellect the day your first class with all due respect fails to give you a job that day even before the worship starts you'll be on your knees in church you are becoming a lamb because when you stepped out you stepped out with confidence believing that on the strength of this and there's nothing wrong with that but ladies and gentlemen the economy of heaven demands brokenness and death to carry power brokenness and death The generation that beholds the lamb is the generation that receives in experience everything the lamb received the reason why we cry for power and do not find it is because power was not supposed to be a prayer point it was supposed to be the end product of a process in the spirit there is nothing wrong praying but oh God give me power give me power this version of you cannot carry it no you have to be dead enough to host great glory I wish I had the time to share with you my dealings with God for many years I did not understand what God was doing in my life where are we going with all of these things we are doing you pray and fast and study what is the meaning of just tell me the name of what we are doing listen I want you to listen we're going to pray now I remember the time God instructed me I was paying two bedroom flat three bedroom flat for people and yet I was staying in one room I would go to preach and return back and stay in one room it was not luck what is this that you're doing with me oh God I wanted to buy a car God prohibited me now it may not be like that for you that's why I cannot make a doctrine out of it but I'm showing you that in any case no matter how you run away if it's that race one day God, if it is God you submit to you must become a lamb and you must be slain there are many many men of God who are still full of themselves that's why they cannot carry power you must become empty there are many worshippers who are still full of themselves. That's why they have great voices with no impact. Because how you increase your relevance in the spirit is to decrease self. The more self dies, the louder your impact becomes in the spirit. Listen to me. I have studied the generals and the patriarchs. This is the way they followed. And now thank God for the ministry of fathers. But let me charge co-laborers in the gospel. Please do not hide your scars from the people you are raising. They will find you on the throne, but tell them you were once a lamb. Don't be afraid of saying it. That one day you were a lamb and you were slain. Slain by the wickedness of men. Slain by betrayal, yet you were told to keep quiet. Are we together now? You gave everything and thought the result would come by the next day. After one year, the result had not come. You paid a huge price and people told you, you see, this your God thing is affecting you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if we must behold the lamb and run to win, my first charge for us tonight as a foundation for my session is that the missing link to the quality of your Christian experience it may not necessarily be the absence of prayer it may not necessarily be the absence of fasting it may not even necessarily be the absence of Bible study it is the absence of death 
you have deviated from a pattern joseph you still see that pattern from the prison to the throne jesus our pattern man you thought that just because you were called in christ the next thing you will see is glory um it doesn't happen exactly like that it is a journey that is the reason why the bible says paul said this one thing i do forgetting the things that are before me and reaching forth for the things for the things behind and reaching forth for the things that are before me he says i press towards the mark of the high calling in christ house of treasures you are where you are today because a man allowed death to walk in him that life will walk in you i can tell you if apostle felix should come up here he would tell you times where obedience was costly obedience is not cheap oh. it can be very expensive there is something called obedience unto death that was the kind of obedience that brought the glory of Jesus. So today we stand before demons and principalities and powers and say in the name of Jesus be gone. And nothing happens even though the Bible says they should go. I am telling you that the problem is that we fail to look unto Jesus. When you look unto Jesus, the Bible says you are changed. You want to know how change happens? Find out how a seed dies. That's how change happens. I will stop here and will pray. Change happens sometimes in death. You get a seed and bury it and come back after days and see that the form and the fashion is depleting, yet it is called progress. A good farmer who can see begins to rejoice. You are rejoicing that the seed is looking rotten because in the midst of that, it begins to open up. And after a few days, life comes out of that death and that life eventually becomes a tree and many people come to take shade from that tree i wish the trees could speak they would have told us stories they would have said gentlemen you pluck fruits from me today but let me tell you how i grew i grew because i died that's how i became a great orange tree that's how I became a great mango tree. And the Bible says you are like that tree. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But as we prepare to pray, there are some of you, this conference is ushering you into a level of authentic Christianity you have never seen. Where you have a personal relationship with Jesus beyond church. Thank God for church. But you are about to know God in a way that only you can define. He will lead you through certain paths, sometimes uncomfortable. The consolation is that as you are looking unto Jesus, the Bible calls him the author. Whatever he starts, he finishes. Even if you do not understand what is happening between you and him, you rest in the fact that I know that God is working in me. God is working in me. God is working in me. I think it was two years ago. The Lord gave me an instruction, Apostle Felix. It's not something I say everywhere, but he gave me an instruction to sow a seed, that the ministry should sow a seed. It was a very huge instruction. But I know what happens. When God speaks like that, there is a measure of death he wants to bring in you. I'm not asking you to sow. I just want to teach you something. And then when I was done saying yes, Lord, to your will, he now told me, he said, what I asked the ministry to sow, you as a person, you are going to sow twice that amount. No matter how wealthy you are, you will feel it. If you give Ishmael, you can drive Ishmael in one day. But if you give Isaac, even you, you will know that Kai, this one, Isaac died. And when God told me that, I can't, I can't lie. These are the kinds of encounters where God will give you every confirmation you want. A dream, you will get it. Prophecy, you will get it. A vision, you will get it. You must obey. But you see, let me tell you, when I honored God, 
on that wise what God did in my life what God did in the ministry I would simply say to God be the glory so for me every time I want to move to a new season I discern it by a particular frame of dealing from God when I begin to see an increased demand for consecration an increased subjection of the flesh I know a season is coming because that is consistent with God's pattern are we together now yes when God subjects me through certain things certain intense moments of prayer intense moments of fasting intense moments of sacrifices I know that I am because these patterns are known he made known his ways to Moses I begin to rejoice in my spirit even in pain because I know that glory is about to be birthed in another level in another dimension we're gathered here tonight and there are several people who are in several seasons I'm announcing to you that not every season that is uncomfortable is demonic some of the seasons you have entered now is proof that you were really looking on to Jesus hmm. are we together one thing you are assured of is that the end will always be glory but the process many times if you find yourself on the cross find comfort I know there are two thieves around you but you are not a thief the cross is where both good and bad people meet so be comfortable if you're on the cross they may generalize all of you and call you thieves but don't worry after three days <laughs> after three days you saw Jesus and you saw the thieves I'm sure someone would look at them and not knowing what happened say my God you mean this man was an armed robber and then Jesus would keep quiet and say it is finished I've completed the process now I go to Hades I collect the keys and then he resurrected triumphant and the Bible says let this mind be in you looking on to jesus is beyond just reading your bible my brothers and my sisters if you really want to understand this the bible says we do not yet see all things why because there remaineth a rest for the people of god there is an experience to the kingdom we are yet to step into even though potentially in christ all things are finished but experientially it is yet to be made manifest in our lives we're about to pray please help me two people will start running now just hold them so they don't injure themselves I just saw a vision two people the hand of God is coming upon them and they'll just start running I don't know why God does this thing sometimes but just help me once they start please hold them so they don't injure themselves just two people the hand of God is resting upon them very strong we're about to pray please help 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 the person help that help the person please hold the person that's what I'm saying Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is called the way of the Spirit. It is the way of power. You can quote a man of God but until you drink from the well they drank from you will not see the result. There are men today who will blow a shofar and nations will listen. It is not the shofar. It is the posture in the spirit from which the shofar was blown. 
he said Jesus I know Paul I know as for me I have a covenant with my destiny in Christ that I will keep setting my gaze that every dimension I can find in the Christ I will press by faith and under grace until it finds expression in my life that once more God will showcase through men even some of us by mercy that there are men who can align to him and can represent his purposes but let me tell you this ladies and gentlemen for every man that decides to dig deep with the spirit to stay there ah, the level of glory that you carry it can turn you to look like a god upon the earth and i'm not exaggerating my brothers and sisters there are men that carry power there are men that carry grace there are men that god has god has tied a covenant with there are men who will call upon one helper and it is nations that will answer not individuals the kind of grace they carry forbids them to beg the kind of grace they carry forbids them to be small the kind of grace they carry forbids them to be barren the kind of grace they carry forbids them to be under the influence of demonic forces they are the kinds that you will gather against and scatter even without their knowing because there is blood dripping upon their altar tonight we are just going to pray this one dimension worthy is the lamb because he said behold the lamb john told us to look at the lamb he is jesus but he's a lamb he is jesus who saves but in his process of exaltation is a pattern for us to follow you want power you want exaltation you want grace then you must be ready to rise from your throne like he rose up from his throne to strip yourself of that crown are we together now and then to become a lamb even the lamb that was slain and he said i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll listen to me when by the message of god i got to this dimension of death i began to see dimensions of god's faithfulness and mercy in a way that brought tears from my eyes and i said so this is the secret the body of christ has not found it doesn't just happen because you desire it happens because you comply with a pattern so when you begin to pray listen prayer is a preparatory process that makes you assume the mold of any pattern that can reveal any dimension of glory within you so there is a way you can begin to pray and you are in a season where it is power that is deficient in your life the holy ghost does not just answer by giving you power he answers by subjecting you through the spiritual pathways that make you become a man of power are we together you will find out that your appetites now begin to be tamed that appetite for food that appetite to go everywhere god can give you a unique instruction to shut down on entertainment for one year not because entertainment is wrong but because this path you are following requires a unique level of consecration and if you choose to follow that path then you will start accessing power as a worshiper you will stand and raise a song you always sang but it's only that this song is coming from a depth of death and you will see healings and miracles and you will go back and say what changed it was not the melody it was not your voice it was not even your artistry and your competence is that you are now singing from a place of death you have carried glory that comes through your songs as a preacher you will preach the same sermon you've always preached but you will see a different effect because death is working in you that life will be revealed in God's people can you lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute 
Krati Nakaparanto Skiata. We see Jesus. We see Jesus. We do not yet see all things under his feet. But we see Jesus. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Draw from this fountain tonight. Velogi Madonna. Ah, hello, hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hallelujah, sir. The Lord told me something years ago. And he said, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. It sounds like a very simple statement. Not in our world of desiring presence and wanting to be celebrities. Let me tell you the truth. You don't have the power to lay down your life. You only allow God by his spirit to birth that process in you. Hallelujah. There were miracles I never saw in my life. Even though I believed that I read the Bible until death walked in me. There were dimensions of influence and grace I never saw. Listen, what you call a great man is simply a dead man. You are going to pray one prayer, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be distracted. I want to speak over you and we're done. There is a circumcision that is happening to you. I'd like you to open your mouth and pray. And say, Father, I obtain grace to behold the Lamb. The humility of the Lamb. That brokenness, that consecration, that contriteness. Someone go ahead and pray. Oh, pray that and watch exaltation happen in your life and your ministry. Alina sobrande gevele kapros ena kapela gebarada balaka to shavres but we see Jesus our pattern man we see Jesus we run by looking unto Jesus hallelujah hallelujah please do not miss any of these sessions I will be showing you the various dimensions of Jesus you must see and the corresponding dimensions of glory that comes from seeing those dimensions. What happens to you when you behold the Lamb, I will tell you, is exaltation. The implication of beholding the Lamb is that you are changed into the Lamb. The similitude of what you see because the Bible says we are changed into the very image. So if you see the lamb, everything in you that negates the character of the lamb, pride, flesh, as you see, that process engineers a process of death within you. And you find out that through that encounter, pride dies. Through that encounter, vain glory dies. Then it makes way for exaltation. And you begin to rise mysteriously but surely but there are other dimensions in this conference i hope that if god grants us grace we will examine seven and let me tell you this everyone who must be used mightily in this end time not just in ministry but in any process of kingdom advance your fortification as a believer and the level of command of dominion will be derived from these dimensions that you see there is something that when you see what you will access is wisdom wisdom that will translate to mighty works hallelujah can we wrap up now ladies and gentlemen hear me we're talking of the lamb 
let me give somebody an opportunity i saw so many people outside i think i'm right on that you are in this place and then those who are outside also you are saying apostle you are talking about becoming the similitude of that pattern called the lamb but for me i have not even accepted the lordship of jesus i told you that in the spirit the beginning of your race as per god's pattern does not begin when you are born it begins when you are saved are we together so you can be 33 years and with respect to the journey of becoming and destiny actualization you are zero years you are not even born this was the mystery that was being explained to nicodemus i want to give somebody an opportunity i presume that many altar calls have been made but it happened when you were not yet there and i want to give you a chance you may reject jesus christ but you see god gave us the power to choose and with it are consequences i'd like you to give me the honor tonight of making this call those who are saying i want to make it right with jesus here online on site and those online and those who are wanting to rededicate their lives to jesus i'm going to ask you at the count of five to run and come and stand here once the front is filled up i may request that you stay right where you are i need one sincere person who is saying apostle if looking on to jesus is the key to an excelling life then i do not want to delay further i count one to five begin to run one run for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord keep coming let's encourage them as they come for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord for the way of the lord is the way are you running to jesus i choose the way of the lord listen to me a time must come in the life of every man when you make this honorable decision this noble decision for jesus and i'm standing up here with apostle felix the angel of the house i want you to give us the honor of leading you to jesus we see jesus tonight as savior as lord and as christ wherever you are if you're coming come quickly i want to begin to pray apostle i have to make it right i see my dear auntie coming god bless you i see a dear sister on her way coming god bless you you hurry and come and for someone who is following online we want you to encounter jesus even as the lamb that takes away the sins of the world when you become a believer you can follow that pattern to your exaltation but right now as it stands you need to encounter the lamb who took your sins away now look at me ladies and gentlemen i hope i'll get to repeat this tomorrow just a moment gentlemen there are three things you receive when you encounter the savior when you get saved number one you receive the forgiveness of sin number two you receive the gift of righteousness number three you receive zoe the life of god we'll talk more about that because the word life there does not just mean what gives you capacity to breathe in every provision available for your victory that is routed to the christ that sustains the ability to upgrade you to the god class is what the bible calls zoe life ladies and gentlemen i want to thank you for responding to this call through the frailty of our communication you heard the voice of jesus and you saw the face of jesus let me lead you to make this noble decision the wisest decision that any man can make in this side of god's kingdom would you lift your right hand high above your head 
and say this as loud and as clear as you can say lord jesus, lord jesus. one more time say it say lord jesus, lord jesus. Tonight, tonight i have heard your word hold on one of you will shout now under the anointing i just saw light one of you in front cause that influence lives forever in the name of jesus now let's pray say it again say lord jesus i have heard your word i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for my sin i believe that you rose again for my justification tonight i declare that you are savior you are lord you are king of my life i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i have eternal life I have Jesus I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted let me pray for you and then we'll be directed where to take you father thank you because the Bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away these precious ones have come declaring your lordship over their lives in the name of Jesus and by the authority that is in Christ we declare your sins forgiven we call you bona fide recipients of the life of God from tonight we decree and declare that you walk in victory the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life enjoy newness of life in Jesus matchless name we pray Thank you for watching today's powerful teaching by Apostle Joshua Selman here on Mercy House TV. We believe the wisdom, revelation, and divine truth shared in this message have sparked a fresh hunger for the things of God in your life. Apostle Selman's teaching continues to be a beacon of light and a source of deep spiritual insights for believers across the world. And we are so honored to bring these life-changing messages to you. As you meditate on the words you just heard, we encourage you to allow the Holy Spirit to continue to walk in your heart. Let this message become more than just words, but a seed planted in your spirit, ready to bear fruits. Remember, the Bible tells us in James 1 verse 22 that we should be doers of the word and not hearers only. It's not enough to listen to this powerful message. Apply them, pray over them, and watch God transform your life in amazing ways. If this message has touched your heart, don't keep it to yourself. Click the like button to let us know and share with your friends, family, and even on your social media platform. The word of God is meant to be shared, and by doing so, you are helping to spread the light of the gospel and impact others for Christ. You never know who might need to hear this message today. And if you are new here, we warmly invite you to join the Mercy House TV family by subscribing to our channel. We release spirit-filled content every day, featuring teachings and sermons that rebuild your faith, encourage your soul, and equip you for victorious Christian living. Don't forget to click the notification bell so as to be the first to know when new videos are uploaded. We also want to hear from you. Drop a message below so as to know how today's message has impacted your life. Whether you have a testimony or a prayer request or questions about the teachings, we are here to engage with you. Our community of believers is here to support one another, uplift each other in prayer, and grow together in our work with God. We read every comment, and your feedback helps us to continue delivering content that blesses and nourishes your spirit. For those who are longing for more teachings, feel free to explore our channel's vast collections of sermon from the great man of God. Mm. Whether you are looking for deeper revelation on faith, prayer, the Holy Spirit, or spiritual growth, we have resources that will meet you where you are in your Christian journey. 
Take advantage of these resources and let your spirit be enriched with the word. Finally, as we conclude, we want to remind you that God's presence goes with you wherever you go. Whatever challenges or trials you may face, know that His grace is sufficient for you. Continue to trust in Him, lean on His promises, and remain steadfast in your faith. Remember, you are not alone. God is with you, guiding, protecting, and working all things together for your good. Thank you for being a part of today's teaching. Stay tuned for more life transforming messages and until we meet again in the next video. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Remain blessed, stay encouraged, and keep pursuing God's purpose for your life. See you in the next video and may God's abundant blessings be upon you and your family in the mighty name of Jesus.